Hey guys, I'm just figuring this out. <laughs> Here we go. Sorry about that. I think this is working. I don't know, I've never done this before. Totally new to it. Um, so I just wanted to do a quick review and go through. This This was a, a PowerPoint that I made for uh, A&P2 at, at Hartford. But um, it's it's the same exact content as what you guys are doing. So I want to do a quick review of AMP1 content, and we'll start with pH and homeostasis. Um, so the general idea with pH, obviously, it's a measurement of the hydrogen ion concentration within a solution. You need to be familiar with the pH values and, and what those values represent, neutral, acidic, alkaline, slash basic. Um, and you should know the pH of human blood. Uh, we'll cover that mostly in chapter 19 uh, starting next week, but 735 to 745, it's important to know that off the top of your head. Um, your pH scale is a um, inverse relationship to the number of hydrogen ions. So in other words, um, the lower numbers mean more hydrogen ions, the higher numbers mean less hi hydrogen ions. The more hydrogen ions in a solution, the more acidic that solution is, and therefore the lower the pH value. So a lot of students get that concept switched around in their heads. If I say something has a high pH, um, that means it has a low hydrogen ion concentration and a, a high a high value on the on the pH scale. So it it's, has a low acidity. It's, it, it's kind of a, a backwards concept depending on how you think of it. Um, this scale right here just shows you those um, particular values um, on the pH scale. It's important to be familiar with, again, blood is most important. Um, and as we go through the different tissues and, and some of the other body systems, those other values will come into play as well. Carbohydrates are important to understand. We're going to look at uh, nutrition and digestion this semester. So um, it's important to understand carbohydrates are made of monosaccharides. It's important to recognize glucose as a monosaccharide, what a polysaccharide is, the idea that um, glucose and uh, these saccharides are our main source of fuel in our body and our most immediate source of fuel in our body. The terms glycogenesis and glycogenolysis are important to understand. Those words glycogenesis, if you just look at the, the word itself, it's literally meaning making glycogen. In other words, your body's converting all of that extra blood sugar into a, a storage form because you're not using it. And then glycogenolysis is the opposite. That's when your blood sugar is low and your body's breaking down stored glycogen to create glucose so that you can use the glucose to get energy. Uh, lipids or fats, right? Important concepts here, the difference between saturated and unsaturated fats. You might need to go back in your book and review the basic differences there. It has to do with the double bonds and the number of hydrogen atoms. Um, fatty acids and glycerol are the main source of fuel for some of our body tissues. And um, as we get through some of our systems, you'll see which ones prefer that. Um, and we'll talk more about the nutrition aspect of this when, when we cover nutrition later on in the semester. But this chart here gives you a nice overview of some of the basics that you should be familiar with. Uh, proteins are the most abundant source of organic molecules in our body. They, they contain those basic elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and they also contain nitrogen. Um, the carbohydrates and the lipids do not contain nitrogen. Um, these are our, our main building blocks for everything in our body, our hair, our skin, our nails, components of our blood, hormones, bone, it's all based in proteins. Uh, and those proteins are made from the same 20 amino acids. Uh, those 20 amino acids are considered the building blocks. And we get those amino acids from the food that we put into our body. So it's really important that we start to look at our body as, as a whole this semester instead of just part by part by part. And that's something that you're going to have to do as a student, looking at the big picture as we go through and we comb through these tissues and we comb through these groups of organs and systems. It's really important that you start to put it into the, the big picture. Uh, proteins act as enzymes. Enzymes, of course, are catalysts. They can break down substrates into products. They can also do the reverse, so they can work frontwards and backwards. It's important to understand the factors that affect enzyme function. 
uh, nucleic acids are those large organic molecules um, found in the nucleus of the cell. We're talking DNA and RNA. We're also talking ATP is a nucleic acid. ATP in the form of adenosine triphosphate, that third phosphate pops on and off as that high energy bond to, um, to release energy for cells to use. Uh, ATP is the main energy currency in our cells. It's what our cells use, use for energy. The enzyme ATPase is the enzyme that uh, will catalyze that phosphorylation or adding that phosphate on. Sorry, my voice is starting to go, it's kind of late. <laughs> uh, it's important to understand what metabolism is. In our everyday language, we use the word metabolism incorrectly. We'll say, oh, I'm getting older, my metabolism's slowing down. But really, metabolism is all of the chemical reactions in your body, the catabolic and anabolic reactions that are in your body, the building and the breaking. And those are the dehydration synthesis slash condensation reactions or the hydrolysis reactions. Hydrolysis is like digestion, that's the breaking down, whereas the dehydration synthesis, even that word synthesis, means making, taking things that were separate and, and using them to build something else. Um, then we get into a quick review of cells, uh, the idea of that plasma membrane, uh, the semi-permeable membrane and um, all of the different organelles inside of the cell, including um, you know the ribosomes where the proteins are made, and the mitochondria where the ATP is made, the endoplasmic reticulum, um, and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi. You should be familiar with all of these organelles and their functions. We'll talk specifically about the mitochondria briefly. That's the site of aerobic uh, metabolism, the actual breakdown of the pyruvate molecule. Um, we'll get into the nitty gritty bits and pieces of it, but in general, when glucose comes in, into the cell, it's immediately broken down in a process called glycolysis. And then there's a little transition reaction that occurs creating um, acetyl-CoA, and then the acetyl-CoA can go into the citric acid cycle, which releases carbon dioxide, and it also creates NADH and FADH2. Those molecules, those coenzymes, will then enter what's called the electron transport chain uh, to form lots and lots of ATP. The nucleus is where, of course, our DNA is stored. That's the site of um, the uh, DNA storage and information storage for our cells. And of course, that's all within the genetic code, A, T, C, and G. It's important to review that, be familiar with it. Cells differentiate into um, different types depending on where they are in the body and it's important to understand that all of our cells have the same exact DNA inside of them. If it's a liver cell, it has the same exact DNA as a brain cell. Uh, it's just which genes are turned on and off and that's called differentiation. It depends on which genes are active or inactive in a particular cell. The concept of cell division is important uh, this semester when we're talking about different tissue layers and uh, towards the end when we get into reproduction, the difference between mitosis and meiosis, very important to understand that those were all concepts covered in chapter three. You may want to review those and um, as well as how mitosis plays a role in cancer um, and cancer derivatives, how cancer spreads. We'll be touching on this throughout the um, semester as well. It all basically has to do with the misregulation of the cell cycle. Um, protein synthesis, very briefly here is where I'm running out of time on my little uh, recorder that I'm trying out. Uh, basically, once those genes are turned on inside of a cell, um, the DNA will unwind and unzip, and a process called transcription will occur, and transcription is basically taking that DNA, putting it into mRNA language. Um, then the mRNA can leave the nucleus, go to a ribosome, and then translation occurs. Translation is where the actual amino acids will be assembled to create a protein. Um, after that chain of amino acids has been made, then processing occurs to create the three-dimensional protein structure that you're familiar with. Uh, overviews of the plasma membrane, very important to understand how selectively permeable membranes work, bringing things in and out, how there's different pumps, there's different structural support, um, materials involved, things that are impermeable, impermeable or freely permeable, like water is freely permeable, uh, but something like a, a big old uh, lipid molecule is in, um, impermeable. So I'm going to stop this PowerPoint uh, lecture here and then I will make a second video for you, okay? If I know how to do that. <laughs> Thank you.
Maybe I do this. There we go. 